Professor Gerard, you are uh, an expert in uh, gastrointestinal malignancies. Uh, rectal cancer is a great, um, an excellent model of multidisciplinary approach to cancer patients. Which is the latest development in this area? Well, you are right. The, the basis of treatment of uh, any cancer at the present time is what we call multidisciplinary approach. That means that surgery most of the time and especially in, in, in uh, gastrointestinal cancer is the main treatment. We have to remove the tumor. But uh, of course, most of the time we combine this surgery with uh, radiotherapy and some chemotherapy. And very often, radiotherapy and chemotherapy are given at the same time, we call it concurrent chemoradiation. And uh, this is the basis. But there is so many complex combination of all these surgery, radiotherapy and chemotherapy that the only way to know what is really efficient is to work with a methodology called randomized trial which gives strong evidence. Randomized trial means that uh, with the agreement of the patient we decided by chance that the patient will receive this combination of treatment or this combination of treatment. And at the end, when you include 600, 700 patients in such randomized trial, you look at the statistical results and you get the evidence. And uh, for example, in rectal cancer, a German trial some five years ago have demonstrated that it was better to give radio and chemotherapy before surgery than after. So everybody agreed that we must give preoperative radiochemotherapy. Then the question was what is the best preop radiochemotherapy? And recently we got two randomized trials which can answer this question. The first one is an Italian trial that you know it is a STAR trial where they give radiochemotherapy and the same kind but they added oxaliplatinum. And this trial, unfortunately, showed that oxaliplatin was increasing toxicity and diarrhea and was not improving sterilization of the optic specimen. So it can be said that oxaliplatin in that stage is not efficient and is getting some toxicity. And at the same time, in France, we made a same kind of randomized trial. We call it ACOR12. And in this trial, we also gave the oxaliplatin, but we increased the dose of radiotherapy from 45 to 50 grain at the same time. And in this trial, we had the same kind of toxicity because we had oxaliplatin, but we increased the sterilization rate from 13 to 19, nearly 20%, mm -hmm. which means that there's a dose effect. So at the present time, most of the countries agree that the standard treatment for this rectal cancer usually we call them T3, T4, rather large cancer, should be preoperative radiotherapy 50 gray in five weeks, and with capecitabine, and not anymore five of you, the benefit of capecitabine is that you take it per mouse and you don't need any more the injection, and you then, six weeks later, you do the surgery. And with that, we should have less than 6% of local relapse. It was 30% of local relapse some 30 years so. ago. Mm, a real problem of rectal malignancies is uh, mutilating surgery. Does this preoperative uh, approach uh, increase the probability of sphincter preservation? And that's a very important question, especially for the patient who are always afraid to have a permanent stoma mm -hmm. during their whole life. And uh, most of the oncologists think that doing this preoperative chemoradiotherapy will increase the sphincter saving surgery. And we demonstrated with all this randomized trial that unfortunately it was not right. When you compare, for example, in the STAR trial, the rate of sphincter preservation, it is 70%, 70% in both arms, and it is exactly the same in the ACOR-12 trial. It was the same in the German trial. So preoperative radiotherapy and chemotherapy given as it is at the present time, does not improve the sphincter saving surgery. And the question is why? And the answer is, and it is proven in the French Accord 12 trial, it is because this regimen is not strong enough to achieve complete clinical response, that means complete disappearance of the tumor when you feel it with your finger, when you look at the tumor with the rectoscopy before surgery. 
And if there is no complete disappearance, the surgeon will not change his mm -hmm. approach and will do the amputation. And the only way to change this, and it was also shown in a French trial called Lyon 96 trial, where we have now 10 years follow-up, is to increase the dose of radiotherapy in the tumor through what we call contact therapy with the Papillon 50 yeah. machine. And then we move from 30% to 60% sphincter preservation. And most of all, sometimes organ preservation, we can keep the rectum and no radical surgery. During this ESTRA conference, we've seen a lot of new technologies, uh, real high-precision radiotherapy. Which is the impact of these modern uh, technologies on the um, approach to the rectal cancer patients? Which is the message we can give to the surgeons, to the patients about toxicity? Well, the message is the same as at the beginning of radiotherapy a century ago. We always aim at giving 100% of the dose in the tumor and 0% in the normal tissue. And if we achieve that, we will be very efficient and no toxicity. And modern technology is aiming at that kind of uh, treatment with most of the dose focused in the tumor and sparing the normal tissue. And it is true that what we call 3D conformal therapy, IMRT, image-guided radiotherapy, stereotactic radiotherapy, uh, adaptive radiotherapy, and all this modern machine like CyberKnife tomotherapy, the Vero machine, him, uh, are color. able <laughs> to concentrate the dose to the tumor. And it is the same with brachytherapy and with contact therapy. So the message is that uh, really there is a big change in technology due to software, computer, robotic, and all these technological change, much faster than the biological knowledge, impact on the practice. And at the end, most of the treatment now are safer and more efficient in most of the situation. And for example, a big change is what we used to call palliation. Uh, now, when you have a brain metastasis, a liver metastasis, a lung metastasis, you can do surgery, but if it is an inoperable patient, you can deliver such a high dose with such an accurate ballistic that you will sterilize the tumor and you may cure some patients that were not able to be cured some yes. years ago. So really improvement in technology is improving the efficiency of the treatment and most of all the tolerance of the treatment. Okay, thank you very much.